Hi kids, I miss you so much, but we're still gonna do some picture books here. And Spoon, you know Spoon is one of my favorite books. You know how I love books because they teach us good lessons that teach us it in such a simple way. And Spoon teaches us that there are things that we really should appreciate about ourselves and the lucky things we have instead of looking at everybody else and all the fun things they have and they can do. So, Spoon, you know Amy Krauss Rosenthal is the author and I just love her. I just love her. I think she's so clever. So here's the picture of Spoon. Meet Spoon. Spoon. And look at their little sugar packets here. You'll see why in a little bit. This is Spoon. This is Spoon's family. Some of them are pretty fancy, if you have any fancy aunts or uncles or grandma and grandpas. On Sundays, Spoon goes to visit his Aunt Silver. He has to be on his very best behavior there. She's very fancy and proper. Ta-ta! Darling, goodbye. At bedtime, Spoon likes to hear the story about his adventurous great-grandmother who fell in love with a dish and ran off to a distant land. Can you think of what um, nursery rhyme that might refer to? Oh, and there's Spoon laying in his bed with a little sugar pack as his pillow. Lately, though, Spoon had been feeling blue. What's wrong? asked his mother. You look a bit bent out of shape. Nothing, mumbled Spoon. It's just that, I don't know, all my friends have it so much better than me. Like Knife. Knife is so lucky. He gets to cut. He gets to spread. I never get to cut or spread. Yes, Knife is pretty spiffy that way, isn't he? Mom says. And Fork. Fork is so lucky. She gets to go practically everywhere. I bet she never goes stir crazy like I do. Fork does get out there and make herself useful, doesn't she? She gets to go on the grill and in salads and cake and spaghetti oh, and chopsticks they are so lucky everyone thinks they're really cool and exotic no one thinks i'm cool or exotic those chopsticks are something else aren't they Mom's, mom kind of realizes what spoon is feeling meanwhile if only spoon knew what his friends were saying at that very minute. Spoon is so lucky, said Knife. He's so fun and easygoing. Everyone's so serious with me. No one's ever allowed to be silly with me, like they are with Spoon. This is true. You can't be silly with a knife in your hand. Spoon is so lucky, said Fork. He gets to measure stuff. No one ever does that with me. That's true, you can't use a fork to measure anything. Spoon is so lucky, said Chopsticks. He can go places by himself. We could never function apart. It's kind of hard to use Chopsticks if you only have one. That night, before bedtime stories, Mom's, Spoon's mom turned off the light, tucked him in, and said, you know, Spoon, I wonder if you realize just how lucky you are. Your friends will never know the joy of diving head first into a bowl of ice cream. They'll never know what it feels like to clink against the side of a cereal bowl. And they'll never be able to twirl around in a mug or relax in a cup of tea. See, the little tea bag says, Hi. Spoon hadn't thought of it that way before. 
He lay awake in bed for a long time. His mind was racing. He felt so alive. There was only one thing to do. There he is in, in the silverware drawer saying, I can't sleep. And mom and dad, they say, come on, let's snuggle. Come, Spoon. And so he did. Sweet dreams. Next time, we will read the next book about Spoon's Friends. I'll see you then.